they were very dry. Now, you know, as long as you lay bones out in a valley and the sun shines on it, the bones get dry, which means the bones in the valley had been there for a very, very, very long time. That's what this means. This ain't somebody just just walking long time, Soraya, long time. Long time, long time. What long time, Prince? 1619 to 2016. It's 397 years. Long time they've been in the valley. Come on. Long time. Long, long time. Very dry. And Yah said to me, son of man, can these bones live? Not no skeletons. Not no dead. It says, can the bones live? And he said, Oh, my goodness, look how profound what he says. Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Yael, you know. Again, he said unto me, <laughs> prophesy to the bones and mm. say to them, O valley, O dry bones, hear the word of Yah. Come now, on. the bones are in the valley for a long time, and the creator mm. didn't tell the prophet Ezekiel, whose name means the strength, yes, Kael, of Yah, to prophesy huh, to them politics. He didn't say prophesy to them education. He didn't say mm. prophesy to them the American dream. He said prophesy unto them, O ye valley of the dry bones, hear the word of Yah. That's what Hallelujah. he said. He said that's what wakes up the bones. And now you got to, well, wait a minute. That means that the bones must be something that is awakeable. Come on. <laughs> it says, thus says Yahweh el to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put hmm. shoes on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath, ruach, in you. And you shall live, and then you shall know I am Yah. You've been dead for however long you've been on earth in a fleshly body, walking around dead, meaning not knowing who you are, not knowing the Sabbath, not knowing the high days, not knowing Yahweh's name, not knowing Yahweh Shah the Messiah. You've been the living dead. Boom! In a great valley. Living dead. You, what? That sounds like an oxymoron. The living dead. Israel represents the living dead in a great low valley, Woo, full of bones. So Ezekiel prophesied. So the Hebrew word there, maybe we talked about that before, for prophecy, to understand the prediction for the Nadim is to speak with inspiring, inspirational discourse, which will stir you. So he prophesied as he was commanded, and I prophesied, and there was a noise. Uh-oh. And suddenly there was a rattling. Uh-oh. And the bones came together, bone to bone. That's unity, because the bones represent something. Because the bones coming together are putting something together, building something. Mm. The bones come together. See, you can't have the body of the Messiah till you get the bones of the Messiah together. You got to understand what the bones represent in Israel and the sinews represent in Israel. Because indeed, when the bones came together, which is the foundation, don't you know when you build a building, you put a scaffolding on the outside and watch the building erect? That's the skeleton of the building. Come on. Then you dress it up. But before you put the out part of the glass and all the niceties on the outside looking good, you got to make sure the plumbing work right in the building. Make sure the lighting and the electricity. There's somebody out there hearing what I'm saying. Hallelujah. How are you going to put Israel together and bring them together in unity? And they don't understand Torah. They don't understand prophecy. They don't understand the history of their people because they've been in churchianity all their life. Living a lie. In a falsehood, talking about some doggone eggs and a bunny rabbit on Easter Sunday. Heavens to Yah, help our people. Hallelujah. 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 You don't find that word in this book. You don't find Easter in this book. You don't find Christmas in this book. But the satanic forces of darkness got our people keeping lies in the days Hallelujah. of the heathens when you are turned, learn not the ways of the Gentiles. 
So you're in a valley of great dry bones. And then when you hear the word, don't you know that what brought you together of these bones was the word? The word oh, that brought you together. Don't no politics bring you together. You can politic till you blue in the face. It'll make no difference between the Democrat or the Republican. It's the same doggone party anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Been deceiving you since time immemorial. Come Don't on. make no difference. You go, you send your children to every school you want to. You can get DDs. You can get PhDs. You can get THDs. But you still a nigger in America. Come on. Oh, your president yeah, put more letters behind his name than Carter's got little pills. But they talk about him and call him the N-word in a nanosecond. Quick. Yeah, I did oh. not tell you to latch on to politics. He did not tell you to latch on to their political process. You are to latch on to the word. It is the word that stirs and moves you and resurrects you from a laid out prone, prostrated position in a low valley that stand up on your feet and become an exceedingly great army. Come on. Hey. So when this comes upon you and the prophetic word goes out, the scripture says in verse 8, as I read, it says, Indeed, I looked, and the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them all over, but there was no breath in them. Mm, no ruach. That's the word that's there. Ruach. Ruach. Mm. Did you see that when he made man in the beginning, after his image, according to his likeness, people try to misrepresent how the book is actually written. It is not until the second chapter, verse 6 and 7, that the Creator says, let us do what huh? in the making of a man? He made the man out of clay, out of dust of the earth, right? The man Come is on. made out of dust of the earth. So there is the flesh composite breathed into his, his nostrils, breathed. Ruach. Oh, you hear that? Ruach. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of what? Life. Life. Then man became a living soul. That means without the spirit, you can't live. And Israel cannot live without the spirit of Yah. Hallelujah. That's why I said that you know breath in them. So he said to me, prophesize to the breath. So now he's talking to the spirit. Prophesize to the spirit and prophesy, son of man, and say unto the breath. Now look now. He's saying to the spirit of Yah. The spirit of Yah. It says... Say to the breath, thus says Yahweh, Elohecha, come from the four winds and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they live and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly what? Great army. This is the resurrection of Israel. Oh. Oh. This is the resur that is the resurrection of Israel. And if he's resurrecting Israel, if he woke you up, you already confirmed you an Israelite. Where would an Israelite be? In Israel. So if he resurrected you from the death of the valley of the dry bones, then where would you be going to Israel? He said to me, son of man, these bones, here's the scriptorial confirmation of the whole house of Israel. And they say, not half of Israel, not some of Israel, the whole house of Israel. And they say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus says Yahweh Elohim, behold, O my people. So now the bones have been identified. O my people. Watch what he says. I will open up your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of what? He going to bring you where? Yeah. Bring you to the land of Israel. So the graves is a place where dead people live. So your graves are Chicago. Your graves are New York. Your graves are Detroit, Michigan. Your graves are Miami. Your graves are Kingston, Jamaica. Your graves are Toronto, L.A., Dallas, Houston, Austin, Louisiana, North Carolina. Those are your graves. London, 
Because your graves are wherever you were scattered, not knowing who you were. And he said, yeah. prophesy to the four winds. And so wherever you were scattered, you were scattered to the four winds, north, south, east, west. Breathe upon these slaves. Send the Ruach upon them that they might live. Because no man can live without the spirit of y'all. And his people cannot yeah. live without the identifying mark of his spirit upon them, recognizing and representing that they are the nation of Israel, reborn, coming up. You are reborn, not in Israel. You are reborn in the lands of the captivity so you can get to Israel. Hallelujah. Hey. Y'all all right? Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Now, when you go to Israel out of that wilderness, where do you go? Since we unread Ezekiel chapter 37 and all the way down to verse 13, it says, And you shall know that I am Yahweh. I have opened up your graves, O my people, and I bring you up out of these graves. I will put my spirit, verse 14, in you. You shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know I am Yahweh that has spoken it and have performed it, thus say Yahweh. Hosea 2 and 14, for the sake of brevity, 2 and 14 of Hosea. 2 and 14. Hosea 2 and 14. Turn it And it reads on this wise. 2 and 14. Now watch. Look how, sim look how similar this is. Therefore, behold, I will allure her. This is talking about Israel. And I will bring her into the wilderness. I will speak tenderly to her, and I will give, look at that, I will give her vineyards from there. And the valley of Accor is her door of hope. Look at that. She shall sing there as she did in her youth, as she did in the days when she came up out the land of Egypt. Do you see that pattern? Do you see what Yah just showed you? He showed you that I brought you to the Valley of Kor, and the first time, I'm going to bring you right back there, and I'm going to court you all over again, Israel. I'm going to talk to you like I'm rapping to a woman. Honey, you look good. You smell sweet. You fine. And you so fine. Oh, my goodness. The English word cannot even describe that you are Yapa. That's how fine you are. He's going to speak to Israel tenderly. He's going to woo you like a virgin. Because when you woo a virgin, the objective is to make her your wife and consummate the union. you got a marriage supper to go to. I keep trying to tell you that. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Centered around you and you getting this white, fine garment of righteousness and going up. Don't you know you're going to be married to the Father again? You're going to be married you got a wedding supper to go through. You're going to bring you, you going into the wilderness is preparatory. you going to the wilderness of the people. And he told you that the valley of Akar is going to be a door of hope for you. You're going to sing there as you did in your youth, as you did when you came up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall no longer be said in that day, this day you shall call me your husband. So you will call Abba Ishi. Huh? A husband, a man, look, I'm telling you, I got brothers here on this line, daughters. Ask them, do we want to be called Ishi or Adon? Because Adon means Lord, right? Because Sarah called Abraham Lord. She called, it's in the book, she called Abraham Lord, Adon. Now, I don't know about the other brothers, but I'm going to say me. I don't want nobody calling me Adon, Lord, though I be the Lord of the house. But I really prefer for you to call me Ishi. Look how sweet that sounds. Look how tender that is. Y'all said you going to call him Ishi, husband. Not going to call him. Not going to call him master no more. You gonna, When you get married to him, you're going to call him husband, Ishi. And he will take the names of the Belim out of your mouth. And you'll never call up on Baal. You'll never call up on Tammuz. You won't call up on none of them false gods. Jesus won't be heard out of your lips no more. Esau, if you are a so-called Muslim, you'll never say that again once you return to that land and be restored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those hey. 
twisted words and phrases were of the parts of the confusion of the captivity. Don't you know that captivity bring confusion? Right? Um, Hallelujah. Somebody else has got an oil change going on. Can we mute that conversation? Hallelujah. Tom, tell y'all, somebody got oil change. Slick out. And as we get... Have mercy, Father. And so now as we go in the Valley of Accor, as we go into four more scriptures and we're going to close. In the book... In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4, is where we begin our close at. Because now you know you go to the Valley of Accor. Now, remember the scripture said to you that in Revelation 12, 6, that she said in a place for 1,260 days. And then in verse 14 of the same book of Revelation, it says that she has a place prepared for her where she's nurtured for a time, a time's and a half a time, three and a half years on both of those portions. So you already know that you go to these various wildernesses, and you know ultimately you will wind up in the Valley of Accor, which is in the southern part of Yahweh. But while you're in this valley, there's certain things that you need to be aware of. And so we make you aware of that out of the book of Daniel. Out of the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4, and we read all the way through verse 13, Daniel 12, and so you take this down, write this in your notes, highlight it, you write it down on a piece of paper, whatever it is you need to keep this note in your memory, right? However it is. Chapter 12, verse 4 of Daniel says this, But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. So all prophecy, when this scripture was given in Daniel 12 and 4, prophecy was sealed up. Prophecy was shut up. Revelation was not given unto our people. For scripture says the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a teraphim, without a teaching priest, and without a law, without any form of revelation. Because the books were sealed. And so now it says that seal the book to the time of the end, for many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others on one side of this riverbank and the other on that side of the riverbank. Then one said to the other man clothed in linen who was above the water of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of the wonders be? And the scripture says this. Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, a times, and a half a time. That's three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people, that's you, has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. And that has not fully happened yet. Although I heard, Daniel said, I did not understand. Then I, Daniel said, Adonai. What shall be the end of these things? And this is what it said. He said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand. But the wise shall understand. Because you know we're in the times where knowledge has increased, and people are going to and fro. Back in ancient times, you took a camel, took you 60 days. I mean, a 60-mile journey was three days. You can drive 60 miles in less than an hour. Hmm. Knowledge has increased? Mm-hmm. Knowledge has so increased that you can get on an airplane and you can leave Chicago and wind up being in Toronto in less than three hours. Knowledge has increased. Knowledge has increased that you can type on this computer, make a phone a phone call off your cell and be talking to somebody halfway around the world in less than a second. Knowledge has increased. So that means that the books are open, that knowledge has been increased, and that we are in the time of the end. And the scripture says that those who do wicked not going to understand this. But the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, that the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. So there's a second time frame. 
Your first time frame is over here in the previous verse that tells you a time, a times, and a half a time. That's 1,260 days that you're supposed to be hiding. It tells you here that from the time that the abomination of desolation is set up, which is at the midpoint of the tribulation, there should be 1,290 days. That is another three and a half years plus a month. 1,260 days plus 30 days, a new moon, is 1,290 days. Blessed is he or she who waits and comes to the 1,335th day. Because that's the end of the tribulation. 1,335th day is the culmination, and that is exactly 45 days after the 1,290 days, which brings it to a new, I mean, a full moon feast. So it would have to either be Passover at Unleavened Bread, or it would have to be the Feast of the Tabernacles in the fall, which is the last feast that we keep as a people. So it tells you that you either need to understand that the events are occurring on full moons and new moons. This is why we, this is one of the reasons why we teach this about the full moons and the new moons. Because that time frame of 1,260 days, 1,290 days, and 1,335 all deal with the cycles of the moon. And that gives you the complete length and time of the tribulation period. All this happens in the wilderness. All that happens in the wilderness. And the last part that we cover as we go into this portion of the last phase of the close is dealing with when Yahshua was tested, like Israel was tested, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Yahshua is tested in the what? The wilderness. He overcomes the temptation of the adversary in the wilderness. When you look at what happened to us as a people, we were tempted and tested in the wilderness. Book of Matthew 4, 1 through 3, in the book of Hebrews 3 and 8, and in Revelation, and we will close. Matthew 4, 1, and 3. Matityahu says, Then Yahawashai was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness, the Midbar, to be tempted by the adversary. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. And the tempter came to him and said unto him, If you be the son of Yah, command these stones to become bread. And he was hungry. And Yahshua answered and said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yah. Does man live? So he substituted being deceived and tempted by or tempted and deceived by the adversary for regular fleshly food to eat the bread that comes from heaven, meaning the very word of Yah that came down. Yahshua, when he defeated the enemy, he defeated him using the word of Yah. Why? How do we know this? Because he quotes, it is written. Where is it written at? It's written in Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Man lives not by bread alone. Man lives by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yah. Does man live? So I don't understand how some Israelites misunderstand Yahshua, because Yahshua quoted the Torah. <laughs> to defeat Satan, he quoted the word of Yah. He lived by the word of Yah. He was hungry. His body had gone through changes. He was weak in the flesh. Though he be a mighty spirit, the adversary moves on you whenever you're the weak, because that's how Satan works. He don't deal with you when you're strong. The enemy attacks you when you're weak. And Yahshua stood. And how did Yahshua stand? He said, man does not live by bread alone. Man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. Does man live? Defeated the enemy. First checkmate. Second, the devil took him up into the holy city, Jerusalem, set him upon the pillar of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of Yah, Throw yourself down, for it is written. Now Satan quoting scripture. He shall give his angels charge over you, and they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot upon the stone. 
Yahshua comes back and says, it is written, you shall not tempt Yah Da'el. Because Yahshua knew that if he jumped off of the high place of the temple, he would have come plummeting down and he would have tested Yah. And we saw that when we tested Yah in the wilderness, we lost. And Yahshua wasn't going to test Yah. He simply quoted back to the adversary what the scripture says. You shall not tempt Yah Da'el. Take it from Deuteronomy 6.16. Third time, because we know three is not necessarily a charm, but three is completion. So the third time the enemy took him up unto the exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Mm. And Satan said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Yahweh said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, And you shall worship Yahweh, your mighty one, and him only shall you serve. So you may be tested. And each time when you're tested, you need to go into the word of Yah. If you're tested in sickness, you go into the word of Yah. It says, I will put none of the plagues on you that I put upon the Egyptians. I go into the book of Ezekiel, go into the book of Exodus 23, and it says, Yahweh Ropika, Yah is thy healer. Use the word of Yah. By his stripes I have been healed. If you're sick, that's what you quote. If you don't have no funds or you are broken destitute, right, you go straight to the scriptures. You quote right back the same scriptures out of the book of Deuteronomy 8, where it says that we shall Praise and bless Yahweh, our mighty one, for it is he who gives us might and power to get wealth. Mm. You've got to use the word. You're rich in the spirit. Use the word of Yah to defeat your open enemy. Somebody at work say something to you, do what Moses did. Step away and pray for them. And Moses didn't pray for nobody's healing. Moses prayed for the creator to come in and intercede on his behalf. When David prayed, David prayed for the destruction of his enemy. You got to learn how to pray and evoke the power of the Most High in a rightfully and willing way. And Yeshua is tested here in the wilderness that you read after the third time of evoking the word of Yah. Ehad, Shine, Shalos, three completion. Verse 11 says, then the devil left him and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. So we'll be tested in the wilderness again. In the wilderness, we'll be tested. Don't you fall victim to what happened to our people who listened to the bad report, listened to the 10 naysayers, fell victim to the 253 that came to sway them away from Moses because they were unbelievers. You hold fast unto the word of Yah. As we close, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 11, and Revelation 21 and 8. What happens to those who have those types of spirit and behavior upon them? Let us read what the writings of Shaul said concerning this matter. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, and it reads on this wise. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yah? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of Yah. Mm. So that just eliminated a whole bunch of people. <laughs> because some of the doctrines in the various different belief systems teach you that you can be an adulterer and get in the kingdom. You can practice homosexuality and get in the kingdom. You can do all these different things and get in the kingdom. But none of these things, according to the scripture, that people would do could get them, would allow them, rather, in the kingdom. Verse 11 says, such was some of you. And you know some of us was like that. Some of you was like that. 
But when Yah brought you out of the darkness into the marvelous light, then you began to work off of the fruit of the Spirit, the nine fruits of the Spirit, and not the works of the flesh. Because those things that we just enumerated are the works of the flesh. And unbelief, unbelief is a work of the flesh. Oh. You were washed. If you were washed with the blood, were you washed with the blood of Hamashiach? I was. Were you? And if you was, you cannot be an unbeliever anymore. Israelites who walk around call themselves Torah only limit themselves to five books. You're an unbeliever. You don't believe in the Messiah. You don't even teach the Messiah. And you look at us sideways. You the one got it backwards because the scriptures identify you as an anti-Messiah. Is that what the book said? It said, he or she who do not confess that Yahshua came in the flesh, the same is an anti-Messiah. Antichrist in right. English. That's what it is. So I'm not walking around. I wouldn't be you walking around poking my chest out, talking about I'm Torah only. You got a one-way ticket lacking salvation. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, I said it. You got to understand this completely. We come in the full volume of the book. If I limit myself to the five books, then I couldn't go into none of the prophets. I couldn't go into none of the Psalms. I couldn't go into none of the books of wisdom. You got a personal vendetta with the Besora. You got a problem. Your problem is with Yahshua, not with me. You sound just like Dathan, Korah, and Abiram. You are the people that the scripture says you are the ones of the stone which the builders rejected that has become the chief cornerstone. That's how right. it's not. That's who you're rejecting. You're rejecting the chief, the chief cornerstone, not me. I doesn't bother me one bit, but woe be unto you. If you are not in the way of the Most High and have rejected the Messiah, our people rejected the Messiah before. Verse 11 says, such were some of you who were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of Adonai, Yahweh, by the spirit of our mighty one, Yahweh. Revelation 21, as we are closing. Hmm. Hallelujah. Y'all all right? Amen. Hallelujah. Revelation 21 says this as we close. And we're talking about the aspect of the unbelief. And see how the creator in his writings deal with the unbelief. Revelation chapter 21. And it reads this way in verse 8. But the cowardly, fearful, and the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, Sexual, immoral, sexually immoral, sorcerers, they, those deal with sorcery is drugs, it's called pharmacon. Sorcery is witchcraft. Drugs deal with altering the state of mind. You are dealing in an altered state of mind, that's pharmacon. Sorcery. Idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. So, beloved, please be not like our fathers and mothers who wandered in the wilderness, who did not believe the word of Yah, and did not believe his signs and his wonders. You are fully, I pray, now awakened to the truth of the Most High, that he brought you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, and he is revealing unto you all of his prophetic events that are written in the scriptures, and you can see the handwriting on the wall. For you are so, you can see that there are false prophets that have come up on the earth, that you can see the wars and the rumors of wars, the famines, the pestilence, the earthquakes in many places. We were told that when you saw these things, these were the signs of his coming and the restoration of Israel unto the promised land. So you be strong and of a good courage. You know, be not afraid nor dismayed, for Yahweh thy mighty one is with you wherever you go. So let all of Israel give glory, honor, and praise unto Yahweh by saying hallelujah. 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 May Yah bless you. May Yahweh keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you. May Yahweh be gracious unto you, Israel, and give you eternal and everlasting peace. Hallelujah. Your card.
And if you 